Hey guys, what's up? My name is Caitlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so happy that you are here. Today I am going to give you tips and tricks on how to achieve your New Year's goals, but really this applies to any of your goals throughout any time of the year. It doesn't matter if it is the New Year, it just happens to be the New Year. And so I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. But before we get into it today, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. That would really help me out. I would greatly appreciate it. And yeah, we're just going to get right into it. So tip number one is make sure your goal is specific. If your goal is to just read more books, how are you, you want to be able to like measure your progress. So for you want to pick like a number or an amount of time, like for me, when I decided to read 52 books in 2018, I'm like, cool, that's one book a week on average. And I had the entire year where it's like, if I didn't read for a week or two, I could read more later on. And it's just, it helps to be specific where it's like, I think for this year, I want to read 26 books, which is two books a month, which is totally doable for me because I'm, I'm a reader. But it's like, okay, two books a month, that is doable versus you know, oh, I just want to read more. It's like, okay, 26 books throughout the whole year, and that is two books a month, for example. But this applies to your fitness goals, like, oh, I want to get in more shape. Okay, what does that mean? Oh, I want to attend three classes a week for the month of January. And it's really just breaking down your goals into manageable chunks and knowing exactly what the end result is versus, oh, I want to do more of this thing. By making your goals measurable, like knowing like the amount of something or like the end result, like that will help you so much. That will help you feel not like a failure because when you get to the end of the year, it's like, oh yeah, I wanted to be in better shape, but I didn't really make it specific and then I didn't set up habits to support my goal. So that leads me to tip number two is your daily habits. Whatever your goals are, do, do your habits support your goals? So if it's read 26 books this year, two books a month, like am I reading 10 pages a day or you know a chapter a day or whatever to help me work towards that goal? Like what are my daily habits to support that? If I wanna be in better shape, it's like, okay, am I drinking water? Am I working out three times a week? Am I eating better? Or, you know, am I following this diet? Am I doing something? Am I cooking at home more? You know, what am I doing daily to support my long-term goals? Tip number three is know your why. Why do you want to reach this goal? And I feel like having a strong why can really propel you to keep going when you're not motivated, when you don't feel like reading, when you don't feel like working out, when you're tired of drinking water. <laughs> like knowing your why. So for me, when I read 52 books in 2018, I made that decision because I was sick and tired of my life. I was like, I'm tired of being unhappy. I'm tired of being depressed. I don't freaking know what to do with my life and I have nothing better to do with my time. So I want to improve my life. So I'm reading 52 books. And like knowing that that's why I was doing it and it was 52 personal development books specifically. And I think only two of those books were actually fiction. But so out 50, 50 books out of the 52 were specifically personal development. And that goal was strategic because I wanted to fill my brain with positive things for an entire year because 2017 absolutely sucked. And so that was my why. And that propelled me to in December of 2018, I was nine books away from reaching my goal on December 1st. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm not going to not reach this goal. So I read nine books in December. So that's one book every three days on average until Christmas. Cause I was freaking determined. I'm like, I've already read 43 books. Like there's no way I'm not going to reach this goal. <laughs> and anyways, this isn't why you should read 52 books, but if you're unhappy with your life, I recommend reading more and the amount more that you read is up to you. I'm not going to tell you you need to read a bajillion books, okay? And finally, tip number four is keep it simple. It's really going to be consistency over time that's going to help you reach your goal. So you want to keep it simple and manageable because if you're like, 
For example, me, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do 75 day hard, which I'm not doing this year, but I have done it last year and the year before. But like, you want it to also be sustainable. So with 75 day hard, it's like, okay, if you don't know what it is, it's a program by Andy Forsello and you do five things every single day. So drink a gallon of water, take a progress picture, read 10 pages of a self-development book, follow a diet with no cheat, cheat meals and no alcohol, and a do two 45 minute workouts. One has to be outside every single day for 75 days. And if you like fail, like if you screw up on any of the tasks or fail or forget to do something or you eat a cookie or you know, you're, you didn't drink a gallon of water, like you fail and you have to start all over on day one. And it's a mental toughness challenge. And it's not sustainable because it's like, oh, okay, I lost 17 pounds the first time that I did it. And then I went back to my bad habits because doing that program was extreme. So I went back to my regular normal habits and I gained all my weight back. Cause maybe some of my habits weren't good habits, but I wasn't doing the extreme things that I had been doing to lose 17 pounds in order, like I stopped doing the extreme things because it's unsustainable. So if you want to reach your goals, you should make them simple and sustainable. And for 75 day hard, it's like, oh, I'm gonna do two 45 minute workouts, ones can be outside. It's like, okay, that's cool and all, but when you're no longer on the program, are you gonna be motivated to do two 45 minute workouts, one outside every single day? So it's like, okay, something more manageable would be, I'm gonna work out four times this week, or I'm gonna go for a walk at lunch twice this week and then do a workout at home twice this week on different days or whatever. You need to be able to make it also enjoyable. I feel like that is part of it too. If you're doing workouts that you absolutely hate, like fitness does, you don't have to hate it. It doesn't have to suck. You could find something, if you don't like what you're doing, mix it up. Like if you've been running every day and you hate running, it's like, okay, have you tried yoga? Have you tried kickboxing? Have you tried dancing? Have you tried just walking in nature? Have you tried hiking? Have you tried something else that would make you feel better about reaching your goal? And I feel like we don't have to suffer to reach our big giant goals. Like for me, so I officially launched business hours for Tap Into Magic where I am available. And so people can schedule one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. And if that's something that interests you, check out my Instagram, the link in my bio, where you can schedule an hour long one-on-one -on -one session with me. But I had to pick out business hours of when I'm available. It's like, okay, so now during these hours, if I don't have one-on-one -on -one clients, I need to be filming YouTube videos and editing them and working during my designated times. But it's like, I don't have to be working 24 seven. I also have a full-time job. So it's like Monday through Thursday, leave my house at 5.30 in the morning and get home at 5.30 in the evening. So it's like during the weekdays, Monday through Thursday, I can't focus on my business and I'm not gonna spend time after work trying to squeeze in clients and film videos and stay up till midnight when I get up at three in the morning. Like, no thank you. Like, I'm not gonna suffer even though my goal is to have my business support me. But I'm not, I'm gonna enjoy the process. And I also think that that is part of setting a year long goal or setting goals in general. You wanna be able to enjoy the process. And if you set these extreme goals where I'm gonna work 24 seven or I'm gonna, you know, go on a diet and never enjoy a single piece of bread ever again, unless you're gluten free, but that's, that's different. But you know, like you don't have to suffer. You can still eat bread and reach your goals. You can still have a cookie for dessert once a week or whatever, but you don't have to suffer to reach your goals. Cause if you absolutely hate the process, are, you're probably going to abandon your goal altogether, which you don't want to do that. You want to be like, okay, I achieved something. Like I want to achieve these things, but you don't have to suffer in order to achieve them. So try to make the process as enjoyable as possible. So anyways, there you have it kind of ranted and raved a little bit, but thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. I hope that these four tips help you pick 
some good goals that's going to really help you and also help you pick good habits to help you support your goals along the way. Anyways, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Happy New Year's and I cannot wait to see you next time. Thank you for watching. Okay, bye!